So we have this problem now. If a user enters search queries in a certain order, the results may come back in a different order because certain requests may take longer than other. And this is quite problematic because the end user would expect that the, the last entered search query is the one that will get him or her the results. So we need to find a solution to make those responses arrive in a particular order. Right now, the listen method just takes the search query and then listens. And whenever there is a response, it, it will get this response and display the results. So if there is a delay in the responses, so the, the order is set by the server, by the way, the server sends the responses. In functional programming, there is this method which is called map. And map is a map method which takes a list and a function and applies the function to each element of that list in order, in a particular order, see, from the beginning to the end. So let's just take a look at the pseudocode. So let's imagine we have a list and this can be any list. Elements can be repeated. And we have a function. Let's say this is a function which takes x and just adds one to the to its parameter. So now the result of apply of using map would be to apply this function to each element, which will be f1, f2, f4, etc., which will be as a result, 2, 3, 5, and so forth. So that's uh, the map function. But sometimes you don't have the whole list at your disposal right away. So here I know that this list has six elements and it has the beginning and the end. I can make some assumptions about this list and uh, I don't have to wait for any elements. But with streams, it's not like that. With streams, it's rather like a list which is, which has a beginning, but it doesn't have an end. And this means that if there is no element, we have to wait. So this is why uh, we need a different function, a function which not only applies a function to uh, the given function, the f function to each element of the list, that also waits for uh, new elements as they arrive. And this is uh, async map, just. You know. So async map is this function which is able to be applied to sequences of elements which are potentially unlimited. So how does it uh, relate to our uh, problem here? Our problem is, is the order. We make some things in certain order. We want the results to arrive in the same order. So when the user enters letters, phrases or words, the last entered search query should be the one that is being displayed at the end. So let's change that. So here, I will just improve this formatting or I can't. Let's add another function. So let's use this async map, which takes function, which means that the, the list is being taken from this stream, this stream which, is, which ends here, uh, which the bounds generates for us, is then passed to the async map, and we just need to define a function which should be applied to the result of the previous operation. So in this case, we need to, once we have the search queries in the, in the order, so len, le, and l, we need to make the queries to the server, the requests to the server in the same order. And then when the results come back, even if they are not in the same order, this function should make them in the proper order, in the order we make the requests. So we will take a filter as before. Oh, it's very slow. And we will uh, do an async function here. And we will just put this um, here. We don't need to assign it to a um, variable. 
and like that. So now if we are listening here, we will be getting the result of the previous operation. So the previous operation is async map. And this operation returns uh, a list of contacts. So here we will be getting contacts now. And we will be just adding them as before to the collection subject so that we can later count those elements. And having that uh, done, it should work as before. But now we won't be getting this problem of, of having the LE query arrive at the end, even if it was typed in the middle. So let's see. So I type len and I should get uh, one result. Now LE L. So as you can see, we had one element, three elements, and more elements, even though the second query LE is taking still two seconds. So the order is now uh, correct. And it solves our problem. Uh, but we can improve it even further. So first, let's just make it uh, a little bit more pretty here. And so I don't need to use return. I can use implicit, implicit return. So in this case, this will be more readable, at least for me. And now there is this last tiny problem, which is that the, the query we are entering in between are also being triggered, are also being sent to the server and displayed in, the, in our UI. So for example, if I type LAN and there's one result, then I type quickly LE and then L, the LE results appear for a second and they, they disappear. But this is not optimal. It would be best to d disregard those other results and because I'm always interested in the last query. So L in my case. So this, this result in between should be disregarded. And luckily enough, Eric Stark provides something like that which is an operation called uh, switch map. It's called map because it also maps for the search queries that are being entered by a user. The queries arrive and now we are trying, we, we begin to execute requests to the server. But switch map is smart enough to see if there are any other requests in progress. And if they are, it will disregard those requests and it will just focus on the last. So we have an error here because the switch map, it needs to return a stream of a one element of the last element. So we need to just slightly improve it. So we can no longer use implicit await because we need to transform this function to a generator. So it returns a stream, an observable. So we just need to do a SAR here. And instead of returning, we are yielding the result like that. And now it should work as expected, but the moment I type LE for, for a short time, you, wouldn't, you won't be seeing this uh, free element, this list of free elements. Let's see. So LEN, I should get one element. Now LE, L, and right away I have the, the results just for the L uh, query. So it's perfect. Up till now we just covered two operations from Eric's Dart. And I challenge you to ask your friends or people to re-implement the functionalities we incorporated into this application without using streams. They are very like tiny details about the order, about the uh, limiting the request being sent to the server. If you are not using streams, it, it's not that easy. It's quite uh, complicated, I would say. And just with Eric Start, with this idea of reactive streams, we solve those uh, rather difficult problems in a very clear and elegant way. But that's not all. And in the future episodes, we will dive even more into that and you will see how it all connects and how we can have beautiful stream-based application. That's all for today. See you next time.